Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new Android TV box and I've been super excited about this because it's actually powered by a new chip known as the S905X4. Now this is kind of a refresh of the X2 or the X3 and it's a quad core A55 CPU running at 2 gigahertz so we should get some pretty good 4K video playback on this device here. Now the box we're going to be taking a look at in this video is known as the Mi Cool KM6 Deluxe Edition. We have 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and the S905X4 CPU. Personally, I like the design of this little box. We kind of got that faux wood grain on the top. It does support AC Wi-Fi, and inside of the box you're also going to get a pretty decent remote here. It's an IR remote, but it does support voice search functionality with this little Android box. And this is actually running a true version of Android TV. This is Android TV 10 based on Android 10. And in the near future, you will be seeing a lot of these S905 X4 powered boxes because they finally got around to manufacturing enough of these chips. Along with the box itself, remote and a six foot HDMI cable, you're also gonna get your power supply. This runs on five volts, two amps, and as for external I.O. on the Mi Cool KM6 Deluxe Edition on the front here, we get this little LED indication strip. Moving around to the side, we have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0 port, and a micro SD card slot, good up to a 512 gigabyte card. Round back, power input, gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, optical audio, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Taking a look at the specs for the CPU, we have that S905X4. This is a quad-core A55 CPU running at a true 2 GHz in this box. The GPU is the Mali G31 MP2. It supports OpenGL ES 3.2 and Vulkan 1.1. 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 64 GB of internal storage, plus that micro SD card. And this does support Wi-Fi 6. We also have Bluetooth 5.0, and the whole unit's running Android 10 TV. Okay, so before we get into testing, I just wanted to give you a quick look at the interface here. As you can see, I mean, this is true Android TV. We do have full access to Google Play, at least the Android TV version of Google Play. This is not the phone version of Android with an Android TV skin on it. We have true Android TV. I've got a bunch of streaming apps to test out. We're going to run some benchmarks, test out some native Android gaming, and some emulation in this video. Let's head over to ID64. As you can see, we have that 4 gigs of RAM. CPU is that Amlogic S905X4, up to 2 GHz, Mali G31 MP2 GPU, and Android 10 with a security patch from September 2020, which is a relatively new security patch when it comes to these cheaper Android TV boxes. So the first thing I want to do is test out some 4K video playback on this device and see how it performs, but unfortunately my game capture, which I have it connected to right now, doesn't capture 4K video. So what I'm going to do is move over to my desk and plug this into one of my 4K monitors just to get a good idea of how this will handle 4K video streaming. First thing we're going to test here is YouTube 4K video playback. And by the way, this is a little AMOLED display. It's 15.6 uh, inches. It's made by Pepper Jobs. It does support HDR and 4K resolutions. One of my favorite little portable monitors. So far, I've had really good luck with 4K video streaming with this little box. Now, even with the S905X3 and the recent updates that have come out, these chips have been handling 4K video playback quite well. So when it comes to YouTube on a box like this, it's going to handle 4K no problem. So let's go ahead and test something else out. We're going to move over to Plex. All right, so here we are with Plex. I'm going to give you some information here. This is 4K, 60 FPS, 79.7 megabits per second. This is streaming from one of my servers. And I think it's going to handle it pretty well. And that loaded up pretty quickly. And by the way, under my settings in the Plex app on the box itself, I do have it set to the maximum resolution. So we are streaming at 4K, 79.7 megabits per second. And it's handling it really well. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some native 4K video playback directly from a micro SD card or a USB drive. In this case, I have a 128 gigabyte micro SD card installed. We're using the built-in video player. And this is 4K, 60 FPS, 55 megabits per second. And again, the S905X4 is handling this 4K video really well. So, I mean, when it comes to 4K video playback on the S905X4, be it the Mi Cool box that we have here, or any other device that has this chip, you're going to get some really good performance out of it compared to older chipsets. I 
I also ran a couple benchmarks. Unfortunately, I could not get Geekbench 5 up and running on this box, even if I side-loaded it. But I was able to run 3D Mark to test out the OpenGL performance. Here we have Slingshot with a total score of 596. And when it comes to Vulcan performance, I used their new wildlife benchmark. Total score, 183. So now I wanted to test out a few native Android TV games on this unit. These were just a few games that popped up on my radar when I was browsing the Google Play Store on this device. First up, we have Octodad, and for each one of these games, you will see the name of the game on screen so you know what's going on. Overall, gaming performance has been pretty good, minus one game that I tested, and that was Dead Trigger 2. I did have some audio issues with that game, but there's a lot of stuff that will work on this box from the Google Play Store. Another thing I wanted to test was some game streaming, so I chose Stadia. I did have to sideload this from my phone, it's pretty easy to do so, but you can't get this from the Google Play Store that's preloaded on this box because it's Google Play for Android TV. But hopefully they do bring this natively over to Android TV boxes in the future because it does work out quite well. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077, and I didn't run into any issues. And by the way, with all of these games you're seeing, I'm using an Xbox One S controller. Moving over to some emulation, first up we have DS using the Drastic Emulator, and if you've ever messed around with this emulator, you know it works well on a ton of different devices, even low-end stuff. This is just one of the best DS emulators out there, and with this box here, you're not going to have any issues running these games. N64 worked much better than I thought it would. Here we have Perfect Dark, and I'm using the Moop N64 Plus FZ core that you can get from the Google Play Store. I didn't do any upscaling or anything like that, but in my opinion, this is very playable. Dreamcast using ReDream works out pretty well. Here we have Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'm not upscaled, but I do have the FPS listed up in the top left hand corner. And as you can see, we're running this game at full speed. Now when it comes to Dreamcast using ReDream on this device, you will run into a couple games like DOA2 that just aren't going to run at full speed even at the lowest resolution. It's just a harder one to emulate with these lower end chips. But for the most part, there's a lot of Dreamcast games that are going to run at full speed. And finally, for emulation testing, we have PSP using PPSSPP. This is Tekken 6, 2x resolution, using the Vulcan backend, no frame skip, no hacks, and it's running great. But this doesn't mean that every PSP game's gonna run fine on this device. There's just some out there that are really hard to emulate, like Chains of Olympus, Ghosts of Sparta, and Midnight Club. Speaking of Chains of Olympus, here it is. Unfortunately, even with frame skip on, 1x resolution, all the hacks that I can use, we can't even hit 30 FPS with it. So overall, the Mi Cool KM6 Deluxe definitely performs well. I'm glad we have true Android TV on a box like this. It is fully Google certified. It also has that new Amlogic S905X4, but unfortunately, I just don't notice a super jump in performance. And going into this, I didn't suspect that the S905X4 would have much of a jump over the X3 or even the X2. What it really comes down to is that AV1 support for video playback and support for Vulkan 1.1 instead of 1.0 with the older X2s and X3s. But like I mentioned, we will be seeing a lot more of these X4 powered boxes and I would definitely choose this over the X2 or the X3 any day as long as the price permits. Now I have heard rumor that the X4 boxes will be more expensive than the X3s and if you can get the X3 for a lot cheaper than an X4, I would just go with that and just hold off until we get a whole new chipset from Amlogic for these lower powered Android TV boxes. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this box or this specific chip set, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.